Hey, we're back in Vegas. I'm John Furrier with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. We're here with McLeod Glass, and we're going to talk about the changing nature of uh, the server design, the I.O. stack, the big problem. Dynamic workload. Talking about here. Um, it was interesting to note that um, the announcement package that you guys had and the messaging that you had started with this whole data tsunami. Um, that's a change in the server world, and you had to really rethink the way in which you were approaching workload management and system architectures. Talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, when we when we looked at this uh, generation of servers, one of the things that we had to go address was uh, this gap between, if you look at compute and memory and how that has grown in terms of performance with Moore's Law and how storage has continued to lag in performance behind that. And so uh, some of what we looked at was optimizing around solid state uh, also uh, drawing out the intelligence within that system and being able to help close that gap with the intelligence and actually, uh, you know, the intelligence is actually workload aware and when, with that workload awareness, we're able to actually go in and optimize performance and efficiency within the system with that intelligence. Uh, for example, uh, if you look at virtualization, uh, typically, that would look like a random random data within the system itself, but we have the ability to look into those virtual machines and actually see uh, sequential data, reorganize that data, and actually use it uh, and, and resequence it and, and, and actually uh, optimize performance based on the actual type of data and workload that's going on. So what's the efficiency advantages with the Gen 8 platform now that it's uh, solid state optimized? Yeah, so I mean, so part of it is um, the ability, you know, if you look back uh, uh, previous generations to go drive some of the performance numbers from a workload standpoint, uh, you had to put as many as 2,000 spindles in that system. Uh, today, with solid state optimizations, uh, you're able to cut that down to around 100 spindles. Uh, so you think about the, the, the power and space savings from that. And, and the one example that we use, uh, we were able to go from three or four racks of servers and storage down to one rack. That's about 88% power savings and a 75% uh, space savings uh, to drive a 50% higher uh, performance in that solution. And what's is there? What's the trade-off there? Is it is it um, um, sacrificing capacity? I got to pay more because it's because it's there's there's less spinning disk, more flash. What's the yeah, What's that equation look like? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so typically customers would have to trade off if they want performance. Um, they've got to trade off capacity, and it's it's very expensive when you talk about solid state. Mm. Uh, one of the great things about the foundation that we've laid down, we're able to deliver performance gains today, but we've also put a really good foundation down for the future in terms of what we're going to be able to deliver, and that is a balanced architecture with the ability to kind of right size or or cut. Uh, uh, eliminate uh, over provisioning of uh, expensive flash. So, for the amount of hot data that you have in your system, you'll be able to optimize the right amount of, of solid state media. And then, when you've got high capacity, you'll be able to put that storage uh, onto that rotational media uh, and then also uh, establish a, a new economic um, and new cost uh, paradigm in terms of being able to do that. Today, it's very, very expensive to try and drive that. So talk about the software that's doing that automated management and movement. Yeah, so it's based on our Smart Array technology. Uh, we delivered uh, the first Smart Array back in 1989. Uh, and we're using uh, that same technology uh, and, and continuing to develop that uh, to, to basically deliver this. And that's where those, the intelligence resides. So that's a 1989. 1989. Is that auto raid. Uh, it no. goes all the way back to our first uh, our first servers that we delivered. In oh, 1989. okay. I was there at the time. Yes. <laughs> I worked yeah. at HP in 1989. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and so um, and it, it's a great legacy and heritage. Yeah. And when you talk about storage, uh, you know, we've delivered uh, uh, advanced data guarding, which was the kind of the precursor to RAID six in the industry. Mm -hmm. And now we've got some cool stuff like uh, advanced data mirroring that we're announcing as part of this which is actually a three-drive mirror uh, and, and, a, and is a much more resilient and performance-driven solution. Uh, you don't have to make the trade-offs. You get performance plus resiliency. So this is kind of an off-the-wall off question relative to, to this conversation, but I want to ask it anyway because yeah. it's related to this, is that there's a slew of, uh, or some say bubble in the startup ecosystem around solid state. A lot of companies coming out with innovation around RAID, this version of that. 
How, how do you guys see that emerging startup field? Do you see any opportunity for the guys coming out of there? What innovations do you guys see that are coming out of the, the, the market? Because you guys have a lot of IP in storage, you mentioned. Yeah. Um, what are you guys seeing in the marketplace? Well, I mean, I definitely, I mean, we wouldn't have driven a, this optimization around solid state if we do, didn't anticipate that um, this is going to continue to grow. Um, it's just, yeah, in order to close that gap, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the compute and memory, being able to close that gap to, uh, to the storage performance, solid state's really the way that you have to go. So. Is, it, is it play at the server? Does it move more into the network side of so it? I, caching so I, layer? Is it a, just a caching layer? You see more more strategic well, I think uh, I think HP is uniquely positioned in the fact that we own the RAID stack uh, inside the server and all the way out to the external storage. You talk all the, way, all the way out to 3PAR, and we have all of the IP necessary to drive some very unique solutions and being able to drive the caching Close to the close to the compute, local to the ser server, as well as being able to take advantage of uh, of the shared storage. I mean, data these days is about volume, velocity, hot data, active data, fast data, as we say, yep. and we coined that term at, uh, at Sapphire. Was that changing some of the architectures? Just you guys are just business as usual. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's just a, an extension of what we've already what we already do. If you look at what Smart Array was built on, um, we've been caching and. Uh, with, in terms of uh, within that controller uh, for a long time, and it's an extension of those technologies that are going to get us there. So you guys were quoting, I saw some of the numbers in uh, in the announcement, like a 6x improvement yeah. on the Smart Array, but that's correct. was that on a RAID 6? Well, yeah. Can you just detail yeah, yeah. out so that Smart? Yeah, so that's a RAID 6, uh, so comparison of solid state to solid state. Um, you know, if you look at a system level, uh, you know, we we're talking about in the previous generation products running about 75,000 IOPS going up to 500,000 IOPS uh, with this new server. So how do you, um, how does the data protection schema change at all, or does it, <clears throat> um, with, with this sort of new flash-based architecture? Uh, I mean, I think that uh, you know, obviously, there's some on some of the uh, resiliency t uh, uh, today is based on you know the fact that you had to have RAID for rotational media and you had failures. Um, one of the things with solid state still today, you still have a probability of failure because of wear out. One of the great things that HP has is this SSD wear gauge, which actually can predictively let you know that uh, you've got, that your a drive is going to reach its end of life and let you know ahead of time so you can actually go replace that drive. Uh, and that's another HP unique technology <laughs> that we're really uh, excited about. You can automate that by getting some robotics into your data center and having a little arm go in and pull it out. <laughs> yeah, you guys are doing a great job. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. Thanks yeah. so much. I'm Claude Glass, the uh, product marketer for the industry standard service. Thanks so much. Great job. Great announcement. Congratulations. Cloud, great right. to meet you. Man. Yeah, yeah, great. Thanks to for meet coming you. on the queue. Yeah, yeah thanks. Hey, a we'll lot. be right back in one minute. Okay.